This ICE 200 project covers three river crossings by water, by rail and road. We're at the first one of those, the oldest one, the Torpoint Ferry. There's been a ferry here since 1791, but the big change came in 1834 when a local engineer, civil engineer, James Meadows Rendell, set up the chain ferry concept here, where a vessel pulls itself along pairs of chains using its own motive power. The first ferry was steam powered, but the ones you can see here today are diesel electric. They're the fifth generation of Torpoint Ferry that's been here. People refer to this actually as a floating bridge because actually it's a bit like a section of bridge being pulled backwards and forwards over the river. The river's nearly 700 metres wide at this point. We've got three ferries, each is on a pair of chains. They propel themselves across the river using uh, diesel electric generators to produce the motive power to pull on the chain. This is a really efficient way of getting over the river. It uses less than a fifth of the power than if you're using a propeller. Basically, a 12-litre truck engine is getting this vessel, which could weigh up to 1,000 tonnes, backwards and forwards across the river. The chain drive system has another advantage beyond the fuel efficiency. It means the ferry can operate in some really bad weather. So these ferries have operated in 90-knot winds when ordinary navigable vessels have had to stop. We're pretty confident these are the biggest and busiest chain ferries in the world, carrying about 7,000 vehicles a day. Okay, we've now moved about four miles upstream to our two bridges, Brunel's iconic rail bridge and the, the Tamar Bridge. I think most people listening to this will have heard of Brunel. All around the country, you'll see evidence of his work. Ships, railways, bridges, tunnels. This is one of his iconic structures. Royal Albert Bridge. It's a really unique shaped bridge. I mean, one of the really interesting things for me as an engineer, looking at Brunel's bridge, is the way it works. You can see the two shapes of the two arches, which are acting like arches, but beneath them, you can see what we call suspension chains. The two work together, anchoring each other. So the bridge actually works in two modes, as an arch and as a suspension bridge, in balance. Ingenious design. There's a really interesting link between the Royal Albert Bridge and the Clifton Suspension Bridge, which is another one of the ICE to new projects. During the construction of Clifton Suspension Bridge, they got into some financial problems, but they'd already bought the suspension chains. They were sitting doing nothing. So when Brunel built this bridge, it worked to buy those chains off Clifton, and bring them down here, supplement with about a thousand extra links, and that's the chains you see here today. They're actually second hand. Before the Tamar Bridge was built, there was a single chain ferry working here, a bit like the ones we've seen at Torpoint Ferry. So it was essential to get a more reliable uh, crossing of the river with more capacity. So that's why the Tamar Bridge was built, to connect the A38, connecting Devon to Cornwall, and it's still the busiest crossing between those two counties. The Tamar Bridge celebrated its 50th anniversary in 2011, and we think at that time, 500 million vehicles had crossed the river on that bridge. So between them, these two bridges are providing the only mainline rail connection between Devon and Cornwall and the busiest road crossing between Devon and Cornwall. So those are making enormous contributions to the economy and to the way people move around, to go about their business, for their recreation. I've been working as a civil engineer for 40 years now. Uh, I wanted to do something scientific, but I also wanted a bit of outdoors and something that was real that you could see happen. That's really what drove me into it. So I started my life in the UK, uh, working in the Midlands, then went to Hong Kong for some really interesting work for 16 years, working on everything from village access tracks to reclamation to make land for building skyscrapers. I came over to the UK, working in a, a different sort of environment, delivering a service to the public, safe, reliable crossings of this river. That's what all of these three crossings are doing. It's a really visible service and it makes me feel really good about what I'm doing to help people. I hope young people that are watching this can see from these three crossings how creative engineers have been in the past and still are. There's a really wide range of things that you can do, but for me the really big thing is you can see what you're doing, you can see the difference it's making.